guest and the wrap up of our three day conference is a real treat. Directly from Birmingham in the UK, we have Mark McGregor today with us. Mark is an author, consultant, and coach. Mark has been active in the BPM and architecture space for almost 30 years. Mark spent several years as an analyst at Gartner and has worked for many of the significant vendors in the process market. He has written a number of books on process management, including people-centric process management, something of a tools guru. Mark has what of his former colleagues at Gartner suggests is unrivaled insight into the types, use, and nature of tooling. And today he's turning his attention to process mining and its place in the broader process management landscape. Mark, a real privilege and honor to have you here with us and sharing your wisdom with our global audience. Thanks, Jose. Uh, so just bear with me and we will uh, get you the presentation. Uh, okay, so there we go. We're up and running. Hopefully you can see. Fantastic. Well, listen, everyone, it's uh, great to be here with you. I know that you've had an amazing um, three days of listening to people sharing their experiences in using, promoting, or learning about um, process mining. And I feel truly privileged to uh, be joining you here today to provide a little bit of additional color to some of the topics. Um, so as we see, then the big question that I have today is to look at the mining, modeling, or management. Where do you place your bets? Um, because I don't know how you've seen it over the last few days, but there's a kind of this little bit of a shadow war going on. You know, you've got mining vendors saying, hey, this is fantastic. Use process mining and you no longer need to do process modeling. That's so yesterday. Um, we can build all the process models for you, going to save you a fortune. And then on the other hand, you've got the modeling tool vendors saying, well, well, what we do is something completely different. And um, that's not really the same sort of thing, et cetera, et cetera. So here we are caught in the middle saying, well, what do we believe? You know, do we believe these guys saying we no longer need to do it? Do we need these guys saying what they do is something different? And I suggest that, unfortunately, in a simple battle between modeling and mining, we, I guess, as the uh, potential purchasers are the main casualty, but certainly in a business process sense, management becomes the, the casualty because actually we fundamentally are about managing processes. So if we take just a little look at the landscape and, you know, this is just a series of representative vendors. I'm not suggesting for one moment that this is the these are the only vendors. So if you're a vendor watching, listening, or if you're a sponsor and I may have missed you, then I apologize. I just wanted to give a flavor of the landscape. So on the right hand side, we've got a list of many of the um, known process mining vendors. On the left hand side, we've got those who are basically modeling vendors. Well, what's interesting is that about 18 months ago, when I started suggesting that actually it's not a binary choice, one or the other, um, actually there are times when we need both, then actually this is now borne out because if we take a look in the middle, whether we look at business optics, GB Tech, iGraphics, Navium, QPR, Signavio, and Software AG, these are examples of modeling vendors that now have process mining as a capability within their tool set. So suggesting that there absolutely is a space where we can combine mining and modeling. Now, conversely, there are some people on the right hand side of the screen here who suggest that you don't need modeling. And some of you may have seen some of the discussions that I got involved in. And you know, I'm a real believer in the if you're a mining vendor that says you don't need modeling, it's probably because you don't have a modeling capability and it's more to do with your product than what users want. Now, what I would say um, is that, you know, yes, this is an oversimplification. Be aware if you're looking at those vendors in that middle piece of the jigsaw or the, the circles, not all of the offerings are equal. Okay, so I'm not going to go through everyone's offering. It's not what we're here for today. 
but some vendors have their own process mining technology and actually compete in the process mining segment. Others have added process mining through partnering with a process mining vendor. So depending on what's appropriate for your situation, then there is a decent selection out there, but don't assume that anyone is a binary choice. So I wanted to show that this move of combining is important because I don't know how you guys have felt from seeing all the other presentations over the last three days or looking at the various website, but I find it quite challenging sometimes when we think we know what process mining is. But then we go looking and some people are talking about process discovery, some use the process mining, some use APD, so automatic process discovery. Some talk about process intelligence. Some now talk about it being about journey mining or task mining because we need to get rid of variance or deal with conformance, you know, get that higher degree of rigor. Or worse still for me, is that the process mining vendors refer to many of the models they create as process models. I'm going to challenge that perspective. It doesn't make me right, just gives me an opinion. And I'm going to challenge that perspective as we go through over the next few minutes and give you a different way of looking at it. Because I don't mind whether you want to refer to them or think of them as a process model or not. That's entirely your choice. But I would hate for you to be communicating with others and colleagues in your business and for them to think that what you have is the process model when it may not actually be quite like you think. So I think the language of mining vendors can be varied and confusing. Um, I, I wish I'd put um, an additional link onto this slide. One of my former colleagues, a guy called Hank Barnes, uh, who spends a lot of time consulting with vendors, um, put out a blog yesterday, which was suggesting that too many vendors are jumping all over the same terms as everybody else, but using them differently and spending more time confusing the market than helping to educate the market. It would have been a very nice addition. So I'm not the only one that gets a little confused by these things. So my argument is that despite what many say, most business processes note the input actually can't be mined because many of those business processes span multiple systems and many of the tools out there still only look at a singular system there are some now that are looking at bringing that data from multiple systems but again even with the addition of task mining which is adding a degree of complexity for us the user that says, well, hang on a minute, we've got to get data from multiple systems and they're saying we can task mine and we can kind of fudge all that together and call it a business process. Well, why don't we just accept that actually sometimes we can use it and sometimes we can't. When it comes to applying process mining to customer journeys, I struggle to understand how you can do that because if you're correctly and fully using customer journeys, then they begin outside of your organization. They begin in the mind of the customer, whereas what you are mining through tools are only the digital footprints or the digital traces that are left behind. So let's not confuse capturing the journey through your systems that a customer might take in order to buy or have um, product delivered with actually a customer journey. So they're, they're different things. I'm not saying that one's right and the other's wrong. We just need to think about which one it is and what it is we want to do and not just buy into the, hey, we can just simply mine. It'd be much better. You can indeed take things like you know, your HubSpots, your Salesforce, into your SAPs and track many steps that customers take, but that's not necessarily the customer journey in terms of it. And indeed, yeah, if we take this very topic that we're looking at now, how many of you are looking at various websites, listening to these presentations and doing a whole bunch of things for which there's no digital footprint for a vendor to capture and therefore mine. So there's a big piece going on. So just be aware that you might be missing it. And then when we talk about the task mining, 
yes, it records how users interact with systems and certainly can add to that richness, but it doesn't help you if it's human to human interaction. And I'll give you another situation which um, someone shared with me this week that was a problem for them and indeed would have been a problem for them in my analyst research days. So in my analyst research days, I might take eight to 10 inquiry calls in a day. So speaking to people like you about tooling and various other things. Each of those interactions needs to be recorded in the CRM system that we used. The trouble is some analysts recorded that at the end of each interaction. Some analysts recorded it twice a day. Some analysts simply went through and did an entire batch at the end of the day. So we can't always rely on the time stamping that we're going on there. So just be careful. I'm, you know, don't get me wrong here. I'm a real fan of process mining. I think it does some incredible things. I just want to make sure that we are all in the same place to make sure that we recognize it's not a silver bullet. There are all limitations in what it can do. And when we apply it correctly, it's going to help us. But if we over assume, then we can trip ourselves up. And one other observation, you know, in my mind that a lot of the talk has been around very much around SAP systems like procure to pay, order to cash, hire to retire. You know, let me ask you the question, is what you're capturing designed processes that are truly end to end? Or is what you're mining the transaction chain through the piece of the process that goes through the SAP system? And I'll let you make your own minds up to see how narrow or broad your situation is. So as I was doing my research, I came across a paper and I've given you the, you can go onto the Abbey website here. They did a, a paper recently on the state of process mining and robotic process automation. And I thought there were some interesting statistics here. Is that while 39% of companies think that processes are rigorously adhered to, 51% of the people say, actually, excuse me, we deviate from predefined processes, but to meet customer needs. And, you know, I don't want to talk over my later slides, but this really was a major aha moment for me when one of the use cases that's put out frequently for process mining is how to get rid of variance, make people conform, get rid of those outliers. And it really made me think that, well, actually, it might look neater, and might seem better for me as an organization, but maybe I'm not serving my customers the best way. If these people are deviating in order to serve customers, maybe I need to talk to them more to understand why they're deviating and rethink about what the process should be. Could be that, the, that what I think is my standard process or my linear transaction chain is actually what's wrong. And what I get people conforming to is to make sure everybody does it wrong in a consistent manner. So it may not be the smartest thing. I was really surprised by this statistic that 65% of organizations say that they are either using or in the early stages of adopting process mining. I have to say from my own experience of surveying and, and talking with people, I felt it was much, much lower than that. What was a little bit of a head scratcher though, as you can see here, is that 34% of those companies said that they're doing it, but without tooling, or certainly without process mining tooling. So I can think of a few ways that some people might be trying to do things, but it sounds like a really long-handed and long-winded way of doing it. It may be symptomatic of the fact that many process mining tools are perceived as pretty expensive. So it could be uh, one of those things that, and we see the same thing sometimes in the enterprise architecture space, where if the tooling price is too high, then the incentive for people to try and put together suboptimal homegrown systems is pretty high. So I was surprised that A, so many people say that they're in the early stages of adopting. I would have put it much lower. Um, but also curious as to how those that are getting by without tools. I'm sure some of them are doing some smart things, um, but I really um, figure that if I'm a bank 
I need to focus on banking, not building process mining tools. So just be a little careful when you look at those homegrown solutions. So I'm suggesting that we should use process mining to capture system processes or reverse document system logic, because that's what we're actually capturing, to understand simple variance compliance or conformance issues, because it's only going to, at first glance, allow me to do the simple versions of that. It can help me analyze system paths and bottlenecks, and, and that can be useful. Uh, and notice I'm you know, being a little cagey in this, because actually, when you're reducing those things like the bottlenecks or system paths, within process mining, you don't tend to have access to the resource. So if you're in a modeling tool, then resources would be one of the key things that you'd be attaching. So you'd be running simulations. You could adjust the resources. I've got 10 you know, um, mortgage processors here, or I've got five vacations, et cetera. So without the access to resource, I think it can be a little more challenging. So I wouldn't rely on process mining to deliver me complete process models. They are a piece and a useful piece, but not the whole piece. I, do, I would also say not to rely on them to deliver actions on insight. Now, some vendors now talk about having an action engine and the such like, but the action engine is useful and it's providing some insight, but again, I wouldn't see it to be always the full picture. And that's partly linked to my next point of uncovering the root cause of failures. So, for example, if I'm looking at insurance claims and I'm looking at the way they're all going through and I can see that there's a bunch of claims that are coming out here and going around this way and they're not following my linear path. So I could run simple analysis and say, aha, that's wrong. I'm this is what I'm going to do to stop people doing that and make people do this. But it doesn't necessarily jump out that says, oh, actually, it's because large claims go through this path, small claims go through a different one. So the, the failure may be that actually there isn't one process. There may actually be three purposely three variants of, a, of the process, which happen to be implemented in the same system that's simply recording when the various actions or transactions occur. But actually the designed process outside of the system was designed to go through a different path depending on the scenario. So whilst process mining can help me, I wouldn't rely on it and be certain that what it was giving me were the root causes or that the actions were necessarily fully thought out. Now, what becomes interesting is another play was when we stopped talking about process mining, which is a collection of technology, and talk about process mining and some other additional technologies in the context of what some vendors call process intelligence. Now we start to get something interesting because now we're starting to identify that we can get some ongoing monitoring. We can more easily identify the issues, triggers, and actions. We're focusing more about connecting data, which may not have historically been connected with process, and actually view those you know, in a contextual way. And um, you know, I, used, uh, I showed you the, um, the links to the paper from Abby. I mean, uh, I don't want to pick on them, but you know, they use the concept of a timeline where I'm actually looking at which way a mortgage case goes. I'm not looking at what the process necessarily is. I can look at it both ways. So I, I want to readily digestible dashboards. Many process mining pieces don't do that as well as we would do in process intelligence. There is crossover, okay? I want to supplement and replace some parts of traditional manual research, but I want to take it across the team. So don't just think about it as mining, think about more intelligent ways of covering things. So I suggest that process mining is more of a technology, but process intelligence is potentially the goal that you're seeking, because I really do believe that it's not the mining that makes the difference. It's when you're running 
that constant monitoring from which you can then build it. And one of my, um, we've all got our favorite management gurus. Well, here's one of mine, which is Edward de Bono. Very proud of the fact that um, chose to use some of my articles a few years ago in some of his newsletters. But, you know, hey, we can analyze the past, but we need to design the future. The difference between suffering and enjoying it. Mining tools or pure mining and even some of the intelligence is still all about analyzing either the past or the current. It's not helping me design the future. So I can't ditch modeling concepts for pure mining. On the other hand, modeling historically doesn't connect sufficiently with the underlying historical data to know whether I'm making good decisions going forward. So there's a, a blend of the two. But here's the thing, where do you want to spend your time? Designing the future or just analyzing the past? So when looking about where do we place our, our bet scenario, I created this, and again, not intended to be complete, but just to, to give you a flavor of how I see things coming together. So on the, on the right-hand side, you know, we've got our systems of record. So transactional systems, databases, CRM, et cetera. And we can mine those transaction chains from that. Now, as we talked about, we can also leverage that so that we can run monitoring, so that we can both inform management and where necessary, where we can see remedial action may be required, then we can take that monitoring information and pump that back in to a modeling environment. Uh, and the same goes in terms of the mining. Because within the modeling environment, as I say, we can do resource analysis. We can do multiple scenario planning. We can run simulations, which is one of the areas of weakness for many mining tools. So there's a whole bunch of things that we can do to model the future and plan the future. Now, you know, we can say that having modeled our future, if we then implement that future, and implementation is not in here because it wasn't significant, but if we then implement it, then we should be able to continue to use mining and monitoring to make sure that actually what's occurring is what we intended to occur. Because often we're running through in a mind process and we're focusing on conformance, variance restriction, and what we forget is that actually even the simple happy path, as some people call it, is not the path that was planned. And so it may not be the appropriate one. So there was an area there. And I just added the mapping in there because you know there are times when it's just a quick, simple sketch of a process is enough to understand the current state because the future state is going to look so different. So whether we're mapping and then adding that into our modeling environment, but basically our success for most businesses comes from a combination of people, process, and systems. And so by focusing everything over on the systems, then process, um, if I'm being really specific, actually becomes very procedural because if we're implementing in a system, then you don't tend to be a process, it tends to be a procedure at that point. But over on the other side, then we have the people. So whether we want to discover, analyze, design, validate, or improve processes, we need to combine the various things together. So how you combine them, which tools you already have, which you don't have, is entirely your choice. I just want to bring a perspective that suggests that don't go to one or the other, because if you're doing one or the other, then you're probably missing something that could be of pretty important value to you. Okay, so I believe that success comes with connections rather than replacements. So it's not about replacing one tool with another, it's about connecting a type of tool with another type of tool in the environments that make sense to you. So this is a slide that I purposely didn't play with because sometimes we're forever uh, reinventing the wheel. So this is a slide that I used a few weeks ago in the, um, the Beto ZA Live event. 
in the context there, as this screen shows, was really all about enterprise architecture. And the same thing goes for process management and process mining. Our success as individuals, as teams and organizations will come when we can get everybody involved. We sometimes get really hung up on, well, I've been looking at this particular tool and this particular tool is gonna cost, shall we say, 100,000. And it's just not worth it because only me and Josephine are actually going to be using the tool. Okay, well, whether you spend $100 on a tool for you and Josephine or $100,000, I'm going to suggest that the tool for you and Josephine is the problem, not the solution. Because none of these technologies, none of these tools, and not much of the value is going to be gained by keeping it to a tight group. More benefit will be gained if those dashboards, for example, in process, process intelligence are being used by hundreds of people in the organization. If they're being used on a regular basis as part of the, this is how we check how we're doing, then they're going to want the effort put in to mining and to keep that data up to date. If they're not using it every day, then it's always a cost option. And then the process mining or the process intelligence or indeed the modeling tools that you use are seen as nothing more than a diagnostic tool to solve point problems as opposed to becoming part of the system by which you run the business. So whether you're looking at enterprise architecture, whether you're looking at process management or whether you're looking at process mining, think about how you can get information from a wider group and how you can share that information in such a way that more people can get involved so that you focus on your conversations on the congregation, not the choir. Related to that previous slide, then, you know, process mining output needs to serve everyone, not just the data scientists. I've seen a lot of amazing demos of the technology and they are absolutely incredible. But it all seems to point to providing output for a data scientist or an analyst or some other really large brain individual, as opposed to saying, actually, what can, what can you do for me as an individual? Now, one of the things that I find interesting, and maybe it's the way that we apply the technology. You know, in Europe, we're very um, privacy conscious, so you get a lot of talk about hashing data to anonymize it. In the US, it doesn't tend to be quite the same. But the funny thing is that if you didn't have the anonymized data, then this actually becomes not just a workforce management tool in terms of some a manager managing the workforce, but it could be an individual tool. You, know, you may allow me to see how my performance handling claims compares to people in another country or another office. So I actually can use it as an individual tool, not for Big Brother watching me, but to help improve how I work. Maybe it can help me work out how someone's doing it better and I can actually go and reach to them. So just the monitoring alone can help me understand and improve the way that I work. And there are a list of various other things that we can do, but you know, yes, there's smarter ways of using technology, I'm sure. You know, we've been listening to many of the ways in which process mining is becoming almost synonymous um, with RPA. I think it's because it's a, an exciting area that's taking a lot of budget and therefore is natural for process mining vendors to want to latch onto it. Um, but that's just too easy. But where should we focus those improvement efforts? What about the data to support it? How often when we use a modeling tool the people say, well, that's great, but that's all intuition based. But, you know, it is. But causation and correlation are two different things. So sometimes we need those. things. So just some ideas of how we can improve, not just buying the tool, but assuming that you buy the technology, how you're going to make it actually deliver long term value. 
And as I say here, I think workforce management is an interesting emerging use case to apply the process mining technology. Yes, there'll be variances from country to country, but it's going to be interesting. So as we start to move to the, the close, the tips that I would have for you are, look, we need to make sure that if you're using process mining or process intelligence, work on how you're going to use it constantly to deliver results that you can use every day. So think about it as that monitoring tool first, as a diagnostic tool second, principally because as I say here, I think you'll find it hard to justify the ongoing costs if it's just a diagnostic tool. You know, you don't want an MRI scan every day. And sometimes the cost of this technology can be likened to going through an MRI scan. On the other hand, there are much lower levels of scan that we can do on a more regular basis that can actually um, be a little more preventative in nature. The other tip that I have, and maybe you've heard one or two others talk about this, is you don't need to rely on perfect or totally clean data. And I know that that's a little bit of a misnomer because we'd all like great data. But if you wait for that, you're going to wait forever. It's amazing what insights can still be gained with incomplete data. And there are tools now that when they bump into that incomplete data can actually help you clean it as you go along. My third tip, as you can imagine going through from the rest of the things that we've talked about, is that I suggest that you really do need to ensure that any process mining activities are connected to other process initiatives. And I don't mean that as modeling, but I mean to your lean, your Six Sigma. We've got enough islands of despair that have been going on for the last 25 years in process. Let's not create another island in our organizations because we will all risk failure if we don't actually find ways of working together and complementing each other. So as you move on to your next steps, you know, my suggestions are to identify all the groups within your organization that currently analyze process and get everyone together as to how you might do that. Ask line and executive management what insights current BI tools fail to give them, because I think you'll find that current tools fail to give them a lot of the insights that they need. And if you can capture what they're missing, then that's going to help you build your business case. Identify those key business outcomes. Assess how process mining might help, because don't assume that it will. It's not an accident looking for some way to happen. Evaluate where and how the various process mining, process intelligence vendors might fit into your current tool sets. Maybe they've got partnerships, maybe there are relationships. Maybe they do replace, it's your choice. Question whether your processes that you're interested in or focusing on really do exist within a single system or whether they span multiple systems, and then use that as a reference point when you're talking to vendors or doing proof of concepts or looking for demonstrations. I suggest that you get all of those things together and consider all of the potential use cases before you purchase any tool and you will find it you make different decisions, trust me. When you look at all of the use cases, you're likely to have a different shortlist of vendors than you might have if you're just focused on one particular tool. And then to my point about the collaboration, you know, make sure that you're working on a rollout plan that makes sure that the tool that you choose is delivering value every day. And in closing, so here's a book some of you may have read by a great guy, uh, J.B. Simons, in Getting to Why. And here's my variant of it. You know, it's about why, not what, that uncovers the how. And sometimes with process mining, we get so hooked into focusing on the what, that we forget to ask about the why. I think vendors that are taking a more case-based approach rather than a linear process-based approach have a much broader understanding of helping you look at the whys so that you can get to the correct hows. And with that, I'm going to um, stop sharing and invite um, Jose to join us again for some questions. What, what, a, what a masterclass, Mark, on the, on the theory and practice of uh, so many really uh, uh, 
tools and applications here, process intelligence, process mining, and uh, you're elaborating so much. Really great overview and, uh, and insights. We appreciate that. So several questions came up uh, during your presentation. Um, uh, a very first question is maybe for, the, as you would imagine, the last, the last three days, we have dealt with a lot of different presentations, very interesting, exciting presentations and different approaches. Um, on the process mining, process intelligence, discovery, uh, identification of root cause and addressing those. So if we if we back up, and a lot of, uh, of our participants are uh, somewhat new into the field and they are trying to think about how to get started, what is your best advice for someone who has not made commitments to any of this stuff yet and is starting to think about how can process mining help me here? How can process intelligence help me here? Um, what would you what would you be your suggestions for them to get started yeah so I, I think that hey if they haven't watched all the presentations over the last three days that would be my starting point like just like you i would focus on the end user presentations first because these particularly were those people that were kind enough to say and by the way if i were doing it again this is what i would do differently those are the, the key lessons. So if they haven't done if they haven't done that, then go back and revisit those. Secondly, um, I would have them focus on, gee, it's not that I'm looking at process mining, it's about these are the problems that I have. Now let me go and see whether process mining can help me solve those problems. And I think, you know, we see it all the time and you know, God bless them, vendors are out there, they have to make it, make their revenue and support events like this, otherwise we wouldn't have them. But they're not there to help you figure out whether it's an appropriate technology for you. They're there to tell you it's an appropriate technology because that's how they make money. You're the one that's got to be thinking about, gee, should I need it? Now, if you've been doing traditional Six Sigma type work and you really want some hard data and collecting numbers, my personal perspective, is that I think mining is a more process mining is a more interesting technology than something like Minitab, which was the main number crunching technology used for a long, long time. I think process mining gives me another interesting way to get to those facts. Uh, I would also say, don't think by experimenting with low cost or free tools, that's the way to just try and see. Don't get sucked in to going down and using a wrong technology. Stay away from the technology and focus on the use cases and the problems, and then look at, gee, has anyone else used it to solve these problems? I, I love your analogy, and you did this during the presentation as well. You know, as a leader of Link Six Sigma in multiple organizations throughout my career, um, uh, the analogy that you used, which I loved, was that the best process mining practitioners will not necessarily be if, if the true intent is to discover for root cause, they will not be the data scientists as much as the best Six Sigma leaders were not statisticians, right? Um, and um, so, so that's a very helpful analogy for a lot of people who have a, a background on those, on those methodologies. Um, William Fuller, um, the asks, uh, and, and this may be a tricky question because you don't want you to sponsor any specific vendor here, but he is maybe curious if you can talk in non-specific ways about uh, vendors. Are there vendors that are, pro his question is, which vendors are offering a complete process management toolkit as opposed to individual tools? Uh, and maybe without naming those uh can you talk a little bit about that is there is there something out there that actually offers more of a complete package yeah so i think it's it's a great question and it's a really useful one to to ask and yes for me to avoid being specific but the key to that question for me is i've just talked about the mining and the modeling as part of management i didn't talk about the automation or the implementation that's related to it now there is a vendor two vendors, to the best of my knowledge, that are sitting in the middle of my two circles that do modeling, mining, and automation. However, caveat emptor, it may not be the strongest automation, and it may be that their automation isn't well connected 
with the modeling environment. So there are going to be vendors, William, who absolutely say, hey, you should come to me because I have all of the pieces. But, you know, even in those vendors, those pieces don't necessarily work together any better than if you took a best of breed approach for the various things. So there is, there is a, a scenario that says, yes, there are vendors that have a more complete offering. But it may be that for your particular use case, William, that actually best of breed may be a better option. And what I would say, William, is, you know, you've got my contact details. If you want to reach out to me on a one to one basis, then I'll have the conversation with you. But it wouldn't be fair to those kind vendors sponsoring this event for me to put this on video and to be out there on YouTube and be hung tomorrow. It might get me a lot of views, but. Uh, William is a great guy and he has participated actively throughout the conference and I'm sure he's listening to you right now and he'll be looking you up, looking you up on LinkedIn and, uh, and ma making that connection. Um, he, as a matter of fact, he has a follow-up question uh, on that and uh, his question is that, um, and you discussed this and he's thinking from a leadership perspective, how do you move senior management off its bias for IT-led solutions as opposed to business-led solutions, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna add something to this. And working with a lot of CEOs, um, I'm not even sure if this is a fair question. And because and here's why: because I think a lot of CEOs they just get fed IT-based solutions constantly, constantly. And uh, these business-led solutions, I don't think the business does a very good job at communicating to the CEO sometimes, and there is more attention from outside. You can blame the CEO for that or the C-level for that, for paying more attention to what's going on outside to the experts inside of the business. But boy, that's a real struggle. How, you know, the, the IT world is spending billions of dollars to trying to access CEOs to say that this is the, we have the solution for world hunger and you can have it too. And uh, so, so how, how do you get the CEOs to pay attention to business-led solutions whether, as opposed to IT-led solutions, whether they come from inside or outside? So I think that this is one of the reasons why, and it's slightly off topic, but if you look at it, one of the reasons that RPA is the most interesting automation technology for a long time. You know, it can help you do the wrong things faster than ever before. And it's probably the first technology that realizes and I know some people have been using the Bill Gates quote about computers enabling you to do the wrong things faster than ever before. But I mean, that was business at the speed of thought in 2000. So 20 years ago that he wrote that. So it's good that we're now delivering technology to meet his vision of 20 years ago. Um, but putting that aside, it is the first of those technologies that really has captured the uh, imagination of business. So with all its failings, and I believe it has many, I have to give it kudos for saying, actually, it is a business-led solution. So we have to be careful between IT-led and business-led because both can be automation and both could be about digitalizing. Now, interestingly enough, bringing us back on topic, a better way of looking at this is digitalization. How many of the vendors that have presented over the last few days and on their websites will talk about the use of process mining in digital transformation? So vendors, I'll put a challenge out to you and say the only thing you're mining are things I've already digitalized. So I've already done my transformation or you can't apply mining to it. Now, you could help transform my digital from A to B but you can't help me digitize because if it's not digitized, there's no traces for you to follow. So, but to your question is that is business led, not IT led. I think the challenge that you may be alluding to is when IT goes and excites the boss about the latest, greatest, most exciting thing, and the business manager saying, well, may not be quite that simple then actually we just need to change that dialogue. We need to get him asking the questions. Well, that's fantastic. You can totally automate our claims process. That's brilliant. Let me just ask you, Mr. CEO, are you saying that we no longer wish to deal with the 85 to 90 year old people who built our business and are not technology? Oh no, that's not what I'm saying. Or as one of the speakers at the last time we were all physically together stated, 
yes, I only want those people of the digital generation and I'm willing to let those customers go. But did we have that conversation with the CEO? Did he get to understand that he's making a conscious choice? One audience or the other audience or somewhere in the middle? Because I don't think they are. I don't think they see. They don't see because we don't tend to share the consequences. Fantastic. Uh, we're out of time, but I want to I want to use my own time to finish this conference and give it to you to discuss on what you see happening in the next 12 months, specifically in the marketplace, what you see happening with technology and business. Um, what I know that none of us can predict the future, but based on the forces that you see and the trends that are happening, um, what do you see as a next logical step for business, for organizations, for technology in the next 12 months or so? Yeah, I mean, I think that into the topic that we're, where we're looking at now is mining is going to become an increasingly important piece of the jigsaw. I've written other articles and so I'm, it would be wrong of me to say anything different. Say, I'm not sure it will exist as a standalone market because I think that there are, you know, if I'm, Many of the examples used for process mining are against SAP. Okay, well, actually, a lot of SAP customers are transitioning to S4 HANA. Mm -hmm. hmm, so, could I mine my old transactions in my current SAP and then look and see what I need to move forward and what I ditch? Oh, yeah, that could save me millions. Not trying to get Jose to do it my way, but actually transforming. So, that an example use case. And there are many of those other examples, but they belong to something else. They belong to ERP. They belong to content management. And so, and we've seen it with the you know, UI path acquiring process goal. So the RPA vendors, so other vendors will be adding that technology. And that'll get harder. And I predict for the users, this is going to get even harder because I'm not going to know whether they've got real process mining, pretend process mining, or whether they're just saying it's process mining because it's fashionable. But one thing we can be sure of is that over the next 12, 18 months, two years, whether it's RPA, whether it's low code, no code or whatever, increasingly that automation is going to come in. But I'll just throw out there that says for, I'm a dinosaur, I'm not going to accuse you of being a dinosaur as they were of a certain age, but I'm the dinosaur, I couldn't accuse you. But I'm going to say there are going to be some really big high profile failures where people rush to automate various pieces of their business without going through good analysis, design, and thinking about the consequences. They thought it was just cheaper to automate, cheaper to automate. I don't need those Six Sigma lean people figuring that stuff. They take too long to think about it. I'm just going to do it. You know, the, I'm Nike. I'm just going to just do it. Follow them. No, it, we're going to see a number of people falling because actually the consequences one what they saw. And Mark, uh, to summarize that with a quote that we got from a leader at the United States Air Force who is doing a major transformation in the United States Air Force, and he referred back to a corollary of the of the quote that you had before. And he said that technology can make stupid happen at the speed of light. So you have to be careful. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hopefully Mark, we'll all what is the best way for our audience to follow your work, your books, uh, your 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 incredible career? Uh, what is the best way of people to connect with you and follow your work? Yeah, I would say connect with me on LinkedIn, and uh, I would say the same thing. And you know, particularly in the last six months, where we've all been doing differently. I mean, I make no mistake. You know, I'm not doing as much work as I might otherwise have been doing, um, thanks to the the current events, which means that I'm spending some tell me too much time providing suggestions and advice to people for things they should be paying me for but hey i love this stuff so if i can help you i will just reach out on linkedin all i say to people is you may find i come back and say you know i'm not willing to answer that question because you might be a fortune 500 company asking for some great insight that really you should pay for but <laughs> at an individual level if anything i know and anything that i have that i can share i'm always happy to share Fantastic, Mark. Thank you so much so again I'm for gonna, sharing your wisdom from no Birmingham in UK turn off to my the rest of the world. Let you have your time. <laughs> Thank you very much again for sharing your wisdom from Birmingham in UK 
to this a global audience who is very appreciative for your insights today. Thank you so much. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, this concludes Process Mining Live. It's been a true pleasure and honor to be your host. Uh, we're already looking forward to the next event in our series of virtual global events. And that next event will be business transformation and operational excellence in healthcare life. The healthcare industry has been significantly disrupted and dislocated, and that we are going to bring you top industry experts to talk about what they are experiencing in the industry, what adjustments they are making, what it looks going forward, what lessons we have learned. So that ver uh, healthcare uh, live sessions will be September 15th through September 17th. If you'd be interested in learning more about that, go ahead and make sure you register so you have all the access for those for, for that conference. Um, as a reminder, all of the sessions have been recorded and you'll receive next week sometime uh, an email with access to all the materials and all the session recordings that will be made available to you free of charge. And that's only possible again because of the wonderful sponsors that we have throughout this conference. I want to say a big thanks again to UiPath, Salonis, Signavio, Fortress IQ, and Software AG for sponsoring this global conference for over 2,500 registered participants from around the world. We could not do this without their support. So we're very thankful for that. A big thanks also to Brian Raffle, who is the conference director and brings it all together and makes it happen. Without Brian, we wouldn't be enjoying this, conf this, the, this level of content globally. So very appreciative for, for his work. And Vijay Baja, who is the CEO of Procus Digital and provides the leadership and the platform for us to share and learn together. Together, we learn, we adapt, and we create a better future. I'm again, Jose Pires, CEO of Global Excellence and Innovation. We'll continue our conversation on LinkedIn. Just look up, under, look up my name um, and you see that there is a lot going on related to updates to this conference on the, on the posting related to this conference. So thank you again for your participation and engagement throughout these three days. It has been fantastic. Uh, we have made many new colleagues and uh, great leaders from around the world who are part of this community and are part of this journey. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you back soon.